So in the last video, I talked about the texture space or the manifold, all of that stuff. And I mentioned how I'd show you some more examples of that. For right now, let's move on to something else because I decided to add those graphics in in the last video. And I think you guys have a general sense on what is happening there now. We'll go and talk about that in the future, but for right now, let's talk about some of these other settings. To demonstrate this, I have this max on noise. This is a noise that comes with Redshift, and that's plugged right into the surface. And remember, even though I'm using Redshift, these settings that I'm talking about are universal to any render application or any software. So as we learn more about these settings right here, this will apply across everything that you do involving noises. So starting off with color one and color two. I'm not going to really explain that because a lot of this is very self-evident. However, whenever you're working with noises, you typically want to set your preview to a linear space. So what that means in Redshift is that if we go to this cogwheel, we can say th that the display mode here needs to be linear instead of sRGB. If you do sRGB, you're not going to see the correct color really show through. And so I just want to warn you guys about that. It's better to set this to linear whenever you're working with noises as opposed to sRGB. So if we go here to linear, now these colors are going to cor correlate uh, more specifically to what we're trying to do. And that, is, that will especially happen towards the gray values, not the black and white values, but the gray values. So anyway, that's a little bit about color. But as soon as we move on to the seed, now we begin thinking about how these algorithms work in general. So for right now, I'll take these octaves down to zero. I'll talk about what this is here in a minute. But if we go to zero, this is the very first result that the algorithm gives you. So the algorithm runs, the first time it runs, it gives us this. And if we change the seed, what we're essentially doing is we're changing the first results that the algorithm gives us. So it's the first pass, so to speak, and that's all it really does. So it's not just about you know changing the variation of the noise. It's true, it's doing that. But think of it as the algorithm runs. This is the first result. It's changing that very first pass. Now, as we add octaves here, we go like this you'll notice that we're essentially adding detail. And the way this works is that we start with the initial noise like this, and then we layer on an additional noise over and over again to begin adding in these details. And each time we add in this noise, we're adding in noise at a smaller and smaller scale. So the more octaves that you have, the more layers are being used to fill in this detail and with each layer, it gets smaller and smaller. Technically speaking, this is all going through a for loop. And so if you know a thing or two about coding, it's just basically looping through a section of code multiple times until it reaches this octave number. And then once it reaches the octave number, it breaks the loop, it stops adding in the layers, and it gives us our final result. So that's a great way of thinking about the octaves. Related to that, we also have the lacunarity. And lacunarity refers to the scale of the subsequent noise layers. So again, first layer right here, we're adding in a bunch of layers. The scale of those layers is determined by lacunarity. Remember how I said it gets smaller and smaller each time you add in a noise? So if we have a smaller lacunarity, it's scaling up the noise. That means we need more octaves to fill in the detail, like this. And that's a really good way of thinking about it. Also with the lacunarity, if we turn this up from the default, it's going to scale down the size for each subsequent pass, right? And that means you need less octaves to reach a fine detail. Because again, the layers are being scaled down whenever we turn this value up. So based on this amount of knowledge right here, let's think about something interesting. Because 
All we need to do to add more detail is just turn up these octaves. It adds in an additional noise, and it's very quick to get a fine resolution on whatever you're texturing. And by fine, I mean that we can capture very, very small details, and we can do so in a way that's not expensive to the render engine. By comparison, let's say that we used some kind of texture map, either a triplanar or something with UVs, right? And we want to get this really fine degree of detail. Well, to do that, it's going to be a lot more expensive to the render engine than a noise. And the reason why is because a noise is just an algorithm. It runs really quickly, and it doesn't need to go through the whole process of loading in a texture projecting it on a surface or projecting it to your UV space and figuring out things from there. So what that means is that if you want really, really fine detail in your texturing, a great way to do that without killing your render times is using a noise-based workflow. It's one of the biggest advantages of doing this particular technique. Also, because we now understand what the octaves, lacunarity, seed are trying to do, we understand how this generally works, we now have the ability to think outside the box and make our noises look different than everyone else. So let me show you an example of that. Uh, if we turn up the octaves, what you'll notice is that the noise that we see here is not the same shape, it's not the same pattern as this original cellular Voronoi noise, right? So all these detailed layers, it's not the same kind of noise as what we see right here. So one way that we can think outside the box is we can say instead of using this kind of noise, which by the way is typically an FBM noise, FBM stands for Fractal Brownian Motion, instead of using that kind of noise, we can go and add in, let's say, additional cellular patterns to this thing to capture all the, the smaller details. So here's an example of something that you can achieve very easily by relying on a different kind of noise for those smaller details. Here I have this bronze, and I want it to have some kind of basic bronze hammered look. So, Instead of relying on the FBM noise that was layered on, I have this initial noise right here, octave zero, and we can see that color by plugging this in like so. So we start off with this guy, right? And then we begin adding in other cellular noises down here. Let's go ahead and change our view here to linear like so. I went ahead and also added a bit more contrast, so that's why it shows up black right here. But as we add in these additional noises that are also a Voronoi pattern, we end up with this kind of look. And it's not the same as FBM. Look at these details. Again, we're capturing these smaller details through a different kind of noise. And this goes all the way back to what I talked about in the last video where if you start thinking a bit differently like this, a bit out of the box, you can take your noise workflows, which start out looking generic and like what everyone else has, and you can begin making them your own. So this is just one example. Uh, we'll talk about layering here in the future as well, and because there's a few different concepts related to this. Uh, so don't worry about this too much right now. But that all goes to the displacements, and that's how we have this hammered look right here. But it just goes to show that by knowing the octaves, seed, lacunarity, knowing what these do, it can open a door of possibilities for breaking the rules in the future. In the next video, let's continue talking about these other settings.